Welcome to this lecture Infections During Pregnancy. One identify some of the important infections that can happen during pregnancy. Bacterial as group B streptococci, gonorrhea, syphilis. Viral as rubella, herpes, cytomegalovirus, HPV, parvovirus, hepatitis, HIV, varicella. Protozoal as toxoplasma. Chlamydia. To identify the effect of these infections on pregnancy. 3. Identify the effect of pregnancy on these infections. 4. Identify methods of diagnosis of these infections. 5. Describe treatment protocols of these infections. 6. Appreciate screening and prevention of these infections. Pregnant women are at higher risk of severe infection and death from certain pathogens compared with non-pregnant women. In addition to rubella and syphilis, for which pregnant women are routinely screened, the following infections during pregnancy place the mother and the infant at high risk for potential morbidity and mortality. For example, the Torch syndrome refers to an infection developing in a fetus or newborn. The letters standing for toxoplasmosis, other, rubella, cytomegalovirus, and herpes simplex virus. The category other includes syphilis, hepatitis B and C, and HIV. The nonspecific, innate, mechanisms of the immunologic system, including phagocytosis and the inflammatory response, are not affected by pregnancy. The specific, adaptive, mechanisms of the immune response, humoral and cellular, are also not significantly affected. Vitamin D may be an important regulator of the immune system during pregnancy. Exposure to certain infections during pregnancy has been recognized as a significant cause of birth defects slash abortion slash preterm labor. Knowledge of the potential effects of fetal infection is important for counseling patients with known exposures to these pathogens in pregnancy as well as in the workup of an abnormal fetus or neonate. In addition, some congenital infections may lend themselves to various interventions to improve outcomes, e.g., fetal transfusion for parvovirus to antibiotics for toxoplasmosis. Turner in 2014 classified the infections in pregnancy into three categories as shown. However, according to our intended outcomes of this lecture, we will concentrate on some of them. We will approach them according to their biologic classes as mentioned in the ILOs. Important bacterial diseases include Group B streptococci, gonorrhea, and syphilis. Group B streptococci are not the Group A beta hemolytic that cause upper respiratory tract infections. This is the Streptagalactii. Group B streptococcus, Streptococcus agalactii, is the most common cause of severe early onset, 7 days of age infection in newborn infants. It colonizes the lower genital tract, cervix. Preterm labor and prom, intrauterine infection, postpartum endomyometritis. Neonatal pneumonia and meningitis. Early onset GBS. Universal screening for maternal colonization of group B streptococcus at 35 to 37 weeks gestation swab, vaginal and rectal swabs, and culture. Penicillin G, ampicillin. Vancomycin, clindamycin if allergic to penicillin. It will be discussed in details with intrauterine infections. Neisseria gonorrhoeae. Organism. STD. Source. PID during early pregnancy. Neonatal infection, conjunctivitis. Effects. High risk groups. Screening. Swab and culture. Diagnosis. Ceftriaxone 250 mg IM. Treatment. The rise in congenital syphilis has paralleled the increase in primary and secondary syphilis in adults. T. pallidum appears to be able to cross the placenta at any time during pregnancy. 
the incidence of congenital infection is inversely proportional to the duration of maternal infection and to the degree of spirochemia. Recent or secondary infection in the mother confers the greatest risk of fetal infection. Vertical transmission of syphilis. Primary, 90 to 100 percent. Secondary, 70 to 90 percent. Early latent, 40 to 60 percent. Late latent, 10 percent. Tertiary, 5 percent. Pregnancy can be affected at any gestational age. As the pregnancy advances, the frequency of infection increases and the severity of fetal infection decreases. Effects include 1. In utero infection may result in miscarriage, high drops, stillbirth, or neonatal death. 2. Congenital infection can manifest as Hepatosplenomegaly Characteristic desquamative skin rash Snuffles Jaundice Pseudoparalysis Anemia, and thrombocytopenia One later manifestations in childhood include Interstitial keratitis, nerve deafness, anterior bowing of, saber, shins, frontal bossing, mulberry molars, Hutchinson's teeth, and saddle nose. All pregnant women are screened for syphilis. ACOG recommends that all patients be tested at their first prenatal visit. Repeat testing is recommended in the third trimester, at 28 to 32 weeks, and again at delivery in women who are at high risk for syphilis, or those who had a positive screening test in the first trimester. Any woman who delivers a stillborn infant after 20 weeks should also be tested. All are screened and confirmatory test is done. Tetracyclines are contraindicated in pregnancy and erythromycin may not adequately treat the fetus. The treatment for syphilis in pregnancy is benzathine penicillin. Dosage depends on the stage of the disease. Patients who have a positive penicillin skin test should be desensitized and treated with penicillin, because the risks associated with syphilis during pregnancy outweigh the risks of inpatient treatment of a penicillin allergy. Close monitoring of non-troponal tests, RPR or VDRL, should be followed to ensure an appropriate response to therapy. Viral diseases. Vaccination has reduced the rate of infection in pregnant women with a reported incidence of 0.1% of pregnancies. But, the vaccine should not be given during pregnancy. RNA virus with primary infections occurring mostly in unvaccinated children and Adolescence Rubella spreads by respiratory droplets, and has an incubation period of two to three weeks. In the mother, if infection occurs, the symptoms are malaise and myalgia in the presence of a nonpruritic, maculopapular. Reddish rash If infection occurs during week six, cataracts may form. Deafness occurs when infection takes place between weeks 7 and 8. If a mother is infected at the time of delivery, the newborn may contract pneumonitis or encephalitis. 11-16 weeks 55%. 16 weeks 45%. The highest risk to the fetus is associated with infection during the first trimester. Deafness, retinopathies, and central nervous system and cardiac malformations are the most common teratogenic manifestations. If clinical data are suggestive of rubella infection then Test serum for rubella-specific IgG and IgM Presence of a rubella infection is diagnosed by Asterisk A four-fold rise in rubella IgG antibody titer between acute and convalescent serum Asterisk a positive serological test for rubella-specific IgM antibody. Serological tests are best performed within 7-10 days after the onset of the rash and repeated 2-3 weeks later. No treatment is available for rubella. But prevention using the measles, mumps, and rubella. MMR, vaccine is strongly recommended.
It is estimated that 20 to 30 percent of pregnant women are IgG positive for HSV2 before pregnancy and are therefore at risk for shedding virus during pregnancy. About 2 to 4 percent of IgG negative women acquire HSV2 during pregnancy and are usually not diagnosed because of a lack of symptoms. Immunocompromised women and those who have another STI are at highest risk. Some cases of postnatal transmission have been reported. Factors which influence transmission type of maternal infection, primary or recurrent, presence of transplacental maternal neutralizing antibodies, duration of rupture of membranes before delivery, use of fetal scalp electrodes and mode of delivery. The neonatal effects may be severe and are due to exposure to the virus in utero or during delivery. The complications of disseminated neonatal disease are seizures, tremors, poor feeding, and bulging fontanelles. Up to 30% of newborns may die, with more than 50% having neurological damage despite antiviral therapy. It differs by the type of infection either it is primary or secondary. Primary infection risk is greatest with a newly acquired infection, primary genital herpes, in the third trimester, particularly within six weeks of delivery, as viral shedding may persist and the baby is likely to be born before the development of protective maternal antibodies. Recurrent genital herpes associated with a very low risk of neonatal herpes. Recurrent herpes at the time of delivery which is commonly asymptomatic or unrecognized may cause localized forms of neonatal herpes, affecting the CNS, skin, eye, and mouth. Transplacentally acquired HSV antibodies do not prevent neurogenic virus spread to the brain of the neonate. Disease localized to skin, eye, and mouth has the best prognosis, death is unusual. With antiviral treatment neurological and slash or ocular morbidity is 2%. No special screening programs. Gravitas with a history of genital herpes may receive antiviral prophylaxis during the third trimester. Classic C slash P of HSV infection. Pregnancy and transmission to the neonate by using condoms or abstaining from sexual. Intercourse during the third trimester. Antiviral in special cases. The most common cause of intrauterine infection 0.2% to 2.2% of all live births. A common cause of sensory neural hearing loss and mental retardation. One of the herpes viruses. Transmission through droplet spread. Congenital infection is due to transplacental transmission of CMV. Transmission to the fetus may occur due to primary or secondary infection. The probability of intrauterine transmission following primary infection during pregnancy is 30% to 40%, compared with only 1% following secondary infection. Modes of transmission Transplacental, perinatal ingestion or aspiration of cervicovaginal. Secretions at the time of delivery, and ingestion of breast milk. Primary infection mild or asymptomatic. Some malaise, persistent fever, myalgia, cervical lymphadenopathy, and less commonly, pneumonia and hepatitis. Rarely, it may present with a generalized maculopapular rash. After the primary infection, the virus becomes dormant and exists in a latent state, from which it can be reactivated resulting in recurrent infection. Clinical diagnosis of primary CMV infection is unreliable because it is asymptomatic in 90% of cases and clinical signs, when present, are often nonspecific. The highest rate of transmission is in the third trimester but the severity of fetal effects is highest in the first trimester. The infection may also be reactivated during pregnancy. Asymptomatic at birth, most of the congenitally infected infants, 85-90%, have no signs or symptoms at birth, but 5% to 15% of them will develop sequelae such as sensory neural hearing loss, delay of psychomotor development, and visual impairment. Symptomatic at birth. 
asterisk 10-15% of congenitally infected infants will have symptoms at birth FGR, microcephaly, hepatosplenomegaly, petechiae, jaundice, chorioretinitis, thrombocytopenia, and anemia. Asterisk the risk of any sequelae in infants with symptomatic congenital CMV at birth is 90%. Asterisk 20% to 30% of them will die mostly of disseminated intravascular coagulation, hepatic dysfunction, or bacterial superinfection. The blueberry muffin baby has been described with the appearance caused by numerous petechiae on the skin. Do not routinely test, serological, pregnant women for CMV to identify those who have acquired primary infection during pregnancy. It is helpful but not diagnostic because CMV has features. In common with other intrauterine infections and these abnormalities are observed in 25% of infected fetuses. Fetal USS is neither sensitive nor specific to congenital CMV infection. Gancyclovir and valacyclovir have been used in non-pregnant women and in neonates after birth. STD slash ST. Potential routes include transplacental, intrapartum, or postnatal. Since the risk of transmission is low and no controlled study has shown that cesarean section prevents neonatal infection, the presence of HPV infection is not an indication for cesarean section. Transmission to the fetus may occur, occasionally causing neonatal and juvenile respiratory papillomatoses. However, the risk is low, occurring in one of 1,000 fetuses of infected mothers. The virus targets rapidly growing erythroid progenitor cells in bone marrow, fetal liver, umbilical cord, and peripheral blood. Infection common with 50-60% of adults having been infected. Risk of acquiring parvovirus infection in pregnancy is 1 colon 400. Spreads through respiratory secretions, close contact, and, rarely, by blood transfusion. Outbreaks usually occur every 4-5 years and may last up to 6 months. Transplacental transmission occurs in 17-33% of women. Fetus is most vulnerable when infected in the second trimester, with the peak risk at 17-24 weeks gestation, although it may also occur in late gestation. First trimester loss is rare, 3%. Parvovirus infection may cause severe anemia in the fetus, resulting in high drops and death. Most fetuses infected have spontaneous resolution with no adverse outcomes. The estimated fetal loss rate during pregnancy is about 5-10%. The loss rate of fetuses. 20 weeks gestation is 2.3%. The consequences usually develop 3-5 weeks after the onset of maternal infection. Permanent congenital abnormality and slash or congenital anemia have rarely been identified as a consequence of intrauterine infection. Fetal loss spontaneously or as a consequence of non-immune fetal hydrops, NIFH. Hydrops. Fetal anemia combined with the shorter half-life of fetal red blood cells, leads to severe anemia, hypoxia, and high-output cardiac failure. Treatment may include intrauterine transfusion. HPV DNA virus. Blood, body fluids, sexual. Perinatally. Associated with no increased risk of congenital anomalies, but is associated with risk of vertical transmission and neonatal infection. All women are screened for HBV's antigen. Immunoglobulin for the neonate and the vaccine once delivered. The retrovirus, which preferentially targets CD4 lymphocytes, causing progressive immunosuppression. Vertical transmission Pregnancy does not adversely affect HIV progression or survival, although long-term data are lacking. Women using heart in pregnancy may be at increased risk of GDM, PET, and PTD. In the pre-heart era, 
HIV infection was associated with PET. There are conflicting data on the risk of PET in women taking heart. Highly active antiretroviral therapy, heart. HIV positive mother. To optimize health of mother and baby advise to delay conception until. Asterisk heart regimen is optimized and is effectively suppressing viremia. Asterisk prophylaxis against PCP is no longer required. Asterisk any opportunistic infections are treated. Folate supplementation higher dose folate, 5 mg, for women taking cotrimoxazole. Yearly cervical cytology because of the association of HIV, immunosuppression, and cervical neoplasia. Without treatment, the risk of transmission to the fetus is 15% to 25%. Breastfeeding increases transmission by an additional 12% to 14%. The benefits of ARV drugs for a pregnant woman must be weighed against the risks of adverse events to her, the fetus, and newborn. Combination drug regimens are considered the standard of care both for treatment of HIV infection and for prevention of perinatal transmission of HIV. After counseling and discussion about ARV drug use during pregnancy, a pregnant woman's informed choice should be respected. The infection is much more severe in adults than in children and pregnancy does not seem to alter this risk. The frequency of fetal infection secondary to the first trimester maternal infection is less than 5%, although transplacental transmission occurs in about 24% of maternal infections in the last month of pregnancy. Maternal zoster is not associated with a significant risk to the fetus. May affect cutaneous or mucocutaneous neurologic and ocular abnormalities. Here are the scopes of clinical entities. Neonatal varicella can occur when maternal viremia occurs around the time of delivery. Thus, neonates born to women with clinical varicella occurring several days prior to and within a few days after delivery should be appropriately treated and monitored. Obligate intracellular protozoan organism Toxoplasma gondii. Household cats may play a role in contaminating soil which is then transferred to a litter box in the house. Uncooked slash undercooked food from infected beef, lamb, and other animals is another source. Transplacental The infection is usually without symptoms in the mother, but when symptoms do occur they involve fever, rash, and fatigue. This infection can result in an enlarged placenta and fetal hepatomegaly and ascites. Fetal microcephaly occurs in 5% of affected cases. Routine screening is not recommended because of the relatively rare occurrence. With the following preventive activities encouraged, avoidance of raw or undercooked meat or eggs, washing fruits and vegetables, avoidance of cat litter when pregnant, and keeping household cats away from outside, potentially contaminated, soil. Treatment during pregnancy for infected women is available using spiromycin. An STD is related to preterm delivery. Treatment, azithromycin. Please be ready with your questions in the next face-to-face -face session. Thank you.